Okay, we're going to get started with this tutorial on texturing a head. This is going to be a pretty quick tutorial. It's a technique that I've um, that I've developed over the years of doing these textures uh, for heads for different projects at work. Uh, just to show you here real quickly, I've got an image from 3D.SK, uh, which is a great resource for for head images and other texture references. But as you can see here, I've done, I've made a couple of changes to the, the texture itself. Uh, clearly, I've removed the ears. Uh, I've actually taken, you know, one of the ears, and you can do, you know, two if you have, if you think you need, you know, two different ears. Um, move them down here, but I've just got one because one texture, one ear, uh, is going to be fine for what we're doing. But some of the other things that I did, as you can tell, is I've actually removed the um, holes for the nose, the nostrils, and um, other major lines, creases on his face, or other major lines around the nose. I just found that these these lines uh, make texturing uh, really hard to try to match up and, and keep everything excuse me looking good if with those lines but by removing those lines it, it frees you up a little bit more I um, I also probably should do the same thing for the lips so that you can't see this hard line um, but for now I'm just gonna leave it because uh, I just want to show you the uh, good overview of the process and so let's go ahead and get going with this um, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the texture to our mesh here and as you can see, the uh, the default texture is not really too great. The alignment. So I'm going to put a, a UV map, and we're going to go with cylindrical. And when we set it to cylindrical, it's actually going to do its best uh, effort to to take that texture that we have and wrap it around the head, as you can see here. Uh, a couple of things that we need to do to make our you know big global macro adjustments we can use if we go into sub object mode of our UVW map and we can actually use our scale tool and move tool and rotate tool to actually help line this thing up the first thing that I'm gonna look for here is to try to get the eyes lined up so I'm gonna use the oops let's actually go into sub object mode here all right scale this in on the X little ways and I can see where the eyes are on the mesh so I'm gonna move that up here a little bit and I can see that this does a pretty good job um, you might even need to move it around to get that perfect alignment so I can see here if I go into wireframe, you can see where the tear ducts are and where the tear ducts are in the texture and they're very close. I think a little little bit of scaling, a little bit of moving. We might be able to get this lined up really good. Now keep in mind um, this first pass is just something to to give us uh, a quick guideline we you know we want to try to get this as, as good as we can we can tell already that it's, it's really not too bad um, and minor things we can we can actually fix with the unwrap um, but I think this is it's looking pretty good I like the overall placement of everything the mouth is is pretty close. Um, I like I like the placement of the hair and everything, but I think that this open spot I can move this back a little bit. I can actually get that wrapping around my ears. Now that adjustment clearly um, has stretched the eyes out. So let's scale it back up get those eyes back again and as you can tell the envelope of the UVW map the cylindrical uh, gizmo is fitting the head 
a lot more closely now. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with this. I think the eyes are good. I like where the ears will be. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and, and stop here. Um, and I've got my convert to edible poly up here on my own toolbar. So I'm just going to go ahead and collapse this down at this point and just go ahead and hit save. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and add the unwrap uh, modifier. And let's let's start doing some tweaking. So go into it and I'm going to open UV editor. And let's go ahead and come up here and load in the texture that we have applied so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to make this as big as we can. Now, this is this is a an area where you really want to have um, as much screen real estate as possible. So, for example, this would be I would I would actually have this window on my second monitor so that I can see that and see what's going on here in Max very clearly. Uh, so I'm going to try to do my best to to keep both things uh, viewable here. And let's see. The eyes are still there. So one of the things that I I want to get away from is I don't want to see the eyeball mesh. That's just you know it's just information that I don't I don't need to be concerned with at all. So um, what I can do, and what's probably actually not a terrible idea, uh, just would be to go into edible you know what let me just delete the unwrap we haven't done anything go into the um, element mode and I'm just gonna select those eyeballs I mean they're they're kinda close right now as far as their textures are concerned if you hit F2 with it selected you can see um, what it looks like but I'm just gonna go ahead and detach this from the model I can always reattach it later I'll just call this eyes. But by doing this, and as you can see, I can go into unwrap, add an unwrap to this guy. Let's go into face and open. And you see if I add the thing here again, I can actually come in here and let's get let's get more. Let's go ahead and get these eyes lined up the way we want so it's pretty close let's just move this over a little bit okay that eye is good let's grab this guy that eye is actually really good and let's get that lined up about like that that looks pretty good all right um with that adjustment done, I can go ahead and convert to Edible Poly, collapse it down again. Um, so now, with our head, let's go to unwrap again, open it once more, set the texture. And as you can see, uh, we don't have all that e extraneous mesh to look at. And you also notice that I don't have anything inside the mouth at this point uh, clearly we would want to have tongue and the inside of the mouth cavity but it's just at this stage of the game it's just a lot easier to to not worry with that so with this I'm really close to having this done um, I got a little bit of adjustment to do and where I'm going to start is with these um, these edges. I'm just gonna. What I just want to have is I want to have these guys in the center of the eye, so that I can see clearly where um, what are what the visible edges and vertices and everything are, and because 
these guys represent the, the scene and you can tell that the green is the seam so these guys are you know buried inside the eye you're never gonna see them so their placement is irrelevant and you can see that they get stretched back all the way so the next vertice as you can tell here at X vertice in are these guys so I can see clearly that you know this edge represents the edge of the eye that I um, that I do see so clearly I can tell where the issues are so what I'm going to do I can tell that all these guys need to come over a little bit so I'm going to grab from let's say right here grab these guys I'm going to come down and turn on my soft selection and just just barely I don't want to do a huge adjustment here I just want to move a little bit to get those get that eye covered back in now the problem with um, with making these kind of adjustments that you got to watch you got to watch out for you know as you move them that you don't crowd these other um, these other vertices because then you'll start getting a little bit of stretching so again I'm gonna take my soft selection I can see I'm out just a little ways pull this up I'm gonna grab just this guy here move that up all right and pretty happy with with this eye um, probably would be a terrible idea to go ahead and grab this area which is the eye the tear duct and go ahead and get that lined up with the tear duct all right let's go ahead and do the other eye and I'll start with the tear duct grab that move it over into place and I'm going to turn off soft selection real quick so I can grab these guys the seam here and we'll just quickly move these into place so that we can clearly see what we're doing alright that's good enough so again, same same situation. So let's grab like these guys right here, turn our soft selection back on. The setting is still there, so we should be pretty good. And let's so as I'm doing this, I'm watching what's going on over here. I'm watching the placement over here, so it it'll help me to you know, do I need to move it up or down? Uh, this guy here it's pretty good got a little bit happening up here which we can tell now sometimes you might need to either remove the soft selection altogether and come in and just make fine adjustments or you know the soft selection can help you I recommend um, using the soft selection let it help as much as possible but you know there are times where you might want to turn it off now we're gonna get some some stretching like this and this is just because um, you know we're we're trying to jump start the texture clearly you know we would if we we're going to do this for you know uh, a full blown animation project where we want to be able to see the details and we would need to go into photoshop and remove the eyelashes and and even uh, remove this the the eye from this texture itself and actually have the make it to where the eyes closed and cuz all the eyelashes will be made um inside the program but for now i think that this this does pretty good. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do is fix the mouth. 
I can see my nose is um, is pretty well set up. If I wanted to, to you know, if I wanted to go in here and darken in uh, the the nasal cavity, I can see I've got the the vertices right here where I could do I could actually move these down and paint a dark spot right here and then that would make that darker but I'm I'm okay with what this looks like for now what I do want to do is get this mouth lined up so what I'm gonna focus on is running right through here from these edges I'm just gonna grab the whole mouth like this got my soft selection on and clearly what I'm what I want to do is just move these guys and I can see as I move this you can see where the stretching's occurring on the left and that's because the, where the fall off is on the soft selection um, so a lot of times your adjustments will be very minor so I'm just looking to try to find and it's always good to undo and if you need to increase your fall off and move it around so see this size fall off is actually giving me pretty good mobility for just getting a basic alignment and now what I want to do is I want to get the corners of my mouth now this fall off might be too much I, mean, I can see I'm reaching all the way up here to the nose so I'm going to bring that down a little bit. I'm just going to grab the corner of the mouth and I'm going to just try to directly move it there. I can tell this is too much stretching. So what I might need to do is grab, let's say, this much of the area and maybe even bump the soft selection up a little bit. But I want to get, want to get this area over here. Now that doesn't look great. I'm getting some stretch in there. So what we might need to do is see if we can get this lined up okay. And let me see what kind of we might need to make some adjustments to our cheek out here. And I think what was going to actually end up being the best decision is to go back into Photoshop and remove this little crease because that crease obviously is occurring on the actual, you know, the face. But here in Max, we have our own mesh that's creating that crease. So I'm just going to get this guy lined up as best I can. I think the lips are actually not too bad can pick on it directly and kind of move it around and see what you get and I think that's pretty good I can see there's the the line of the lips so as I move it up or down I can see where that line is so I can get a good placement idea there um, but clearly for me the best decision for this mouth to get it really the way that I want is to remove this area uh, of the texture the same way that I you know I fix the nostrils and everything but um, so we got a little bit of the neck and I can see from moving the the mouth around we have a little bit more stretching happening down here but we need to get we need to get all of this onto the texture and easiest way is just to start moving it watching out for stretching of course this part of the mesh is depending on what you're what you're using this for this might or might not be covered up with other parts of of the mesh uh, maybe it's inside of a you know, military vest or armor or something. You might not be able to see it, but if you can see it, then 
you know, clearly going to have to to take particular care of how you texture these guys. But for right now, just to get you familiar with this technique, I'm just going to quickly get these guys on here. For example, projects that I'm working on right now at work, I don't really need to be too concerned about what's going on down here. So this particular technique works good for me. I don't want to mess up too much of that hairline because you can see right there where I've messed up the the seam. And the best thing for me to do at this point is see how far back I can go. Alright, so I think that's good. Um, and I'm just going to quickly, hopefully, hopefully you can see kind of uh, the technique here. And, you know, as with anything, unwrapping any texture, uh, there's no quick fix this technique that I've shown you here is about as quick of a fix as, as I've seen for getting uh, rapid results for a, a head texture. Of course we we have the ear and um, what I recommend for the ear is is you know grabbing these guys itself Find a good angle. Hold control and I just add in and I can see, you know, clearly what's going on over here. And what I want is, you know, to essentially grab, you know, all the vertices that represent the ear where, you know, these guys are part of the head. You know, I just I want all these and then we can texture these guys separately. And just quickly grab some vertices. I could do the um, grow grow selection over here. But I don't want to start grabbing a bunch of vertices I don't want. I'm going to do it once though. I think once might help. So I can see I've grabbed some, so I just hold Alt and deselect those. But that helped me grab a lot of the stuff in here I was missing. And I think I, for the most part, uh, let's grow again. I think it's safe to say I got all the ear. And let's hold Alt and deselect these guys. All right, so everything but. Last, I think I'm gonna leave that that one right there. All right. So with that year selected, let's go ahead and do a planar projection. Turn off the 
and soft selection. And I really should have done this with the polygon <laughs> being selected. So let's just quickly I got my turn my F2 sorry about all that vertice nonsense okay grow gotta grow one more time one more time it's just so much easier to deselect what you don't want sometimes as you can see This is a lot of time spent selecting vertices or faces. All right, got that. So I, I'm not going to do the other ear. I'm not going to let you suffer through watching that crap again. So with this, come down, do a planar projection we see that it takes our ear does a whoops let's keep this where we can see it. now doing peels and um, you know all those things are good but for right now I just want to get this guy so let's turn off planar just want to scale this down, get it into place. I can see that my ear needs to be flipped, so I'll come up here and mirror horizontal. And let me, whoops, getting carried away from me there. I'm going to just try to scale this kind of quickly get it into place we can do um, we can do adjustments further adjustments later I just want to get this thing into place real quick and take a look and see what we got so it's a bit of a mess we have some um, some obvious work to do getting these guys and you know and I think that relaxing and could very well help do a little bit of relax keep boundary points fixed start relax a little bit so that's getting all kinds of jumbled and I guarantee you that's not gonna look good over here so without um, spending too much more time on this I know that these guys these vertices here represent the inside of this ear way down there in that seam those guys and they clearly represent what should be back in here so if I were to just grab them real quick. Let's move them around. I see I grab one that need to grab. There we go. So that guy right there doesn't need to be part of that selection. So kind of the same way we tweak the rest of the face. Um, I think it's you could you would be safe to start going through and and doing those same kind of adjustments here on the ear. Um, now, when it comes to ears, you can see, um, you know, this is okay, and you know, you definitely want to have the ear textured uh, correctly. Um, but the process is, you know, the process is there. 
do some adjustments in your um, in your editor move some vertices see what you got and you know and a lot of times what I have found to be true is that the the actual detail of the ear itself that's on the texture get gets in the way and what you end up doing is you know really just kind of cleaning up and, and making this the, this area not so detailed but it's just more of you know the flesh colors and because you got to remember with when you, if you've got an ear like this the geometry is there um, so when we see all this special detail of these ears and all that stuff that's that's nice if you're if you're faking an ear and you, you know you've got like eight polygons sitting right here and then this is you know having this kind of detail the texture of an ear is great but when you actually have the, the mesh detail here then clearly you can see how the detail of the texture is going to get in the way and you, be, and you better have it lined up perfectly um, which is why you can see that I, I got rid of that detail on the nose and and why you know getting rid of it over here is going to help um, but the alignment for you know for the most part this guy's you know is, is, is done pretty good he's ready to go uh, you know there's more tweaking to be done uh, clearly but you know hopefully this this helps you see how the you know just the procedure the techniques of getting a, a, a head textured relatively quickly quickly um, understanding that there's no one button that's gonna do it for you but this is as close of a technique as I found I hope that this video helps you um, and the next video I'm gonna do is actually showing you how to go about creating your own uh, head reference textures to uh, to apply to these kind of characters so see you in the next one